With the exception of disappearing, which thankfully still came easily to her, Marin didn't need to use her magic to destroy these Imperial soldiers. They managed to do that job just fine on their own. Even with the difficulties Marin had been having with her powers as of late, her frustrating inability to access them, so frustrating Marin could barely even think about it, killing Imperials was still satisfying. She wasn't picky. Magicking them to their death was very funny, yes, but a blaster bolt to the helmet worked just as well sometimes. Today, though, she kept them guessing, blinking in and out of sight the second they got a lock on her, sending them walking off cliff sides and shooting one another in the back. She knew Cal would eliminate the remaining bounty hunters. She'd seen him in action enough times to know that the man knew how to handle a lightsaber. But she was grateful he'd left the troopers to her. Yes, Marin was glad that she finally got to do something useful on this trip out to the middle of nowhere. Not that destroying this base wouldn't be useful to the Mantis crew in general, but Marin generally found that these side trips felt like distractions from the main event, from bringing down the people who had brought down her people, or as close as she could come to that these days. Still, she was grateful to be useful. She was also grateful that she didn't have to crawl on her stomach all the way back to the exit. Every time in these last few years she had watched another stormtrooper's little helmet shatter, or be crushed under a rock slide, or explode, or... She was getting lost with it. But every time she took another one out, regardless of how, she imagined it lighting a spark inside her. And every spark was one more chance to ignite what had gone out. Every death another opportunity. There were times when Marin fought the Empire when all she saw, all she felt, was Daphomir. Its red skies and dark energy sustaining and motivating and, more than anything, raw with potential. Her sisters, the witch clans united under Mother Talzin before the woman turned to the Sith. The verdant marshlands, covered in red mists where Marin had grown up always knowing the danger inherent in the loveliness. The chirodactyls, floating lazily on the hot winds overhead, their cries waking her in the morning when the red sun first crested over the mountaintops. The clear, rejuvenating water of life, created with her own hands with the world around her, with which all Night Sisters were initiated. A world so strong and so beautiful and so terrifying all at the same time. The ichor that flowed through Dathomir's core had flowed through her veins, hot and molten. Their magic was more powerful than anything the Sith had to offer. But it did not last. And now, in each stormtrooper's pathetic little helmet, Marin saw reflected the stark white face of another. Golden eyes in a mechanical shell, too many arms, too many lightsabers leading far, far too many troops into battle for the soul of Dathomir, General Grievous. Airstrikes, assault tanks, the forests burned, Marin's sisters fell. Not even an army of the dead could hold them back. Marin was lucky to have survived. Lucky and very, very good. Or she had been, once. And now she would not stop until the people responsible for Dathomir's destruction lay charred at her feet. She would trace the markings on her face with fingers coated in their ashes. She would avenge her beautiful, terrifying sisters and her beautiful, terrifying planet. It was the only thing in the galaxy that she was meant to do. And so Marin watched the stormtroopers fall one by one on her way out of the brood base. And she smiled, grimly. She'd run in the opposite direction of the Mantis, not wanting to accidentally lead any straggling troops right back across the spindly bridge to their location. But now, she had to find her way back. Fortunately, this damn rock was just built like one big circle. She couldn't even get lost if she tried. All roads led back to the Mantis, eventually. Grease usually kept the ship hidden well, but she hoped he'd perhaps be favoring expediency over stealth at this point and had the engines already running by the time she arrived. 
disappearing, rushing, and reappearing in small bursts from one ramshackle alley to the next. Marin moved slowly around the ring, checking for any remaining troopers who had escaped her wrath. In and out, feeling and unfeeling. Something, then nothing. Again and again, until there was someone behind her, trailing her even as she disappeared, following her. Between bursts, Marin smiled. Finally. The next time she disappeared, instead of continuing forward, Marin doubled back. When she re-emerged, she revealed herself directly behind her pursuer. Marin stared into the back of the shiny white helmet, and gold eyes stared back. She blinked. They were gone. Merely a trick of the light. Didn't make the trooper any less dead, though. Marin lifted her arm, willing herself to find the fire, scraping her insides, desperate for the spark, when she heard, Wait, wait! The stormtrooper lifted her hands over her head. She was taller than Marin, broader. Through her voice filtering unit, she sounded different, scared, as she should be. I know about Dathomir, the trooper blurted, and I'm sorry. Marin paused. She couldn't tell if the feeling in her was cold fury or something else entirely. I don't like to play with my food, Marin responded. Better the stormtrooper didn't know she was having hard times with her powers anyway. And I don't like when people speak about things they can't possibly understand. No, I'm... The trooper stuttered as Marin placed a hand on the back of the trooper's helmet. You're Merin, witch of Dathomir, part of the crew of the Stinger Mantis. You're working against the Empire. Merin rolled her eyes, even though there was no one else to see her. Are you reading my arrest warrant? I've heard it all before. No, I need your help. Now Merin had really heard it all. She dragged her fingers down the smooth white side of the helmet, felt for the latch on the right. Please, Merin. You don't know me. Merin traced her finger around the neck joint to the other side slowly, methodically. And you should refrain from speaking my name again. Her finger caught on the second latch. Maybe she did like to play after all. You learn something new about yourself every day. One finger on the helmet, Marin walked around the stormtrooper until she was just beneath level with what passed for the white mask's eyes. There was hardly any distance between Marin and the trooper, and she thought it was odd that the woman had left her weapon holstered. When Marin exhaled, she could see her breath leave condensation on the plastoid. She let her smile return as she noticed the trooper shaking. With both hands, Marin carefully grabbed both sides of the trooper's helmet and lifted. She wasn't certain what to expect, but it wasn't this. A lavender neck, jutting chin, and full lips, several shades darker than the rest of her skin. Violet like spilled ink matched the hair cut short over her shoulders. Strong featured soft face with freckles like crater orchid petals across her nose and eyes as red as the sky over Dathomir's Rift Valley. Not a human. That was unusual for a stormtrooper as far as Marin had seen. From a hair's breadth away, Marin watched the woman swallow. The helmet clattered to the ground. Marin had forgotten she was holding it, but the noise was what Marin needed to bring her back into the moment, and she shot her hand back up, wrapping it around the woman's throat. Hard, muscular, stronger than the stormtroopers Marin usually fought. Interesting. Talk, Marin demanded. Listen, the woman said in a strange, sharp accent, quickly pushing her words out through Marin's fingers. I want out. I know you have no reason to trust me or believe me, but I've read up on you. I know what the separatists did to Dathomir. Marin moved her face closer. She was shorter than the other woman, but Marin didn't need height. Her power made her fearsome. She would use that to her full, intimidating advantage. 
She hoped the red-eyed woman could feel the fire radiating off her at the mention of something she had no right to be mentioning. War took my people from me too, the woman said, looking down and meeting Marin's stare for stare. If it weren't so foolhardy, Marin would almost be impressed. I can't do this anymore. We all know about the Mantis crew. You're my only chance at getting out. Marin stared up into the red embers of the woman's eyes, the dying coals left behind by the burning forests.